Hi guys, it's Erin here from Queen of Ants. Now, I know there's probably a lot of you out there who are interested in ant keeping, but don't really know where to start. So today I thought I'd just run through a few basic pointers to help you get help get you on your way. So, the first thing you need to know about starting an ant colony is that really all you need is a queen. Now you can go to our website, queenofants.com.au to have a look at all the ants we have available and decide what species you might like to start with. So in a wild nest, the queen would lay eggs which would hatch into these little workers like this little one here. Once a colony reaches a certain size, they'll start producing new queens which are winged queens like this one. And then at a particular time of year, the winged queens and the winged males will leave the nest they fly up in the air where they mate and then they'll return to the ground. And when the queens drop down to the ground, they generally remove their wings and off they go to start a new colony. So after they've mated just once, the queens actually remain fertile for the rest of their life. They don't need to mate again. So how do you choose which ant to start with? Well, there's a few options and a few things you need to think about. The first thing is who is the ant colony for? If it's for you as an adult, then you can pretty much choose any ant you like, depending on what you're interested in. So you could go right up here to a nice big bull ant like this Pyroformis. As long as you have respect for them, you can see they've got quite big mandibles up here, which is really not the end you need to worry about. They also have a wasp-like stinger at the other end. So anyone can keep these guys as long as you're careful. If you're not really feeling up for that, we've got a heap of sugar ant species from these big ladies, Nigriceps, down to some smaller ones like these Elegans and Humilias. These sugar ants are probably what I would recommend for children or for beginners. They're pretty placid in their nature. They don't generally sting and they really don't um, usually bite either. And they're quite easy to look after and they grow at quite a good rate as well to keep your kids interested. So they're always a good place to start. Or you could start with these polyrachis or spiny ants. They're a little bit slower to grow than your sugar ants, but again, pretty placid in nature. And their beautiful colors are really nice to look at. We've got a polyrachis amon, little colony here, with a couple of workers. And there's a polyrachis vermiculosa with a nice golden sheen as well. Or if you're looking for something a little bit small just to get you going, We've got our black trail ants down here as well. They grow quite rapidly. They really can't hurt you at all. And they're a good place to start for kids. So when you decide on which queen you'd like, you um, can place an order and they'll be delivered to you in a little test tube set up like this. So they'll have water at one end, plugged with some cotton wool and some cotton wool on the other end, which allows just enough air in for the ants to use, enough oxygen. And your queens are fine in these tubes until they get quite a few workers. They really don't need much room. And it's not until around about this point or even a few more workers where you need to really consider getting him into a nest. So I think that's a, a few pointers for you guys just to get you started. And you can go from there. Thank you.